Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NVIDIA founder and CEO, Jensen Huang. Happy New Year. Welcome to CES. I have so much to tell you guys, so I'm going to get going. Usually, usually at CES, I talk to you about self-driving cars and gaming. Today, I'm going to focus completely on gaming. The GPU revolutionized modern gaming. There's absolutely no question about it. If you take a look at the last 15 years, which I've shown you a brief history, visual history of computer graphics for video games, and some of the most important games that have come out over the course of the last decade and a half, and the technology that made it possible, GPU was at the center of all of that. The fundamental technology that enabled all of this advance was rasterization. Basically taking geometries in a virtual 3D world and translating those geometries, those triangles, into dots on your screen called pixels. Battlefield 5 took it yet to another level with a technology called photogrammetry. Essentially taking pictures meticulously of the world. Taking pictures meticulously of the world and delighting it, taking the lights out of it. And what you have left is this beautiful image of the real world, which is then applied as a texture map. That texture map, then applying with all of this great technology and pixel shading, turned into what we see as Battlefield V. It basically looks like a photograph, and you're in this, in this world interacting with it. And it's taken us three decades to get here, and let me show you some of the inventions that we think will be necessary to take it to the next level. And so if you take a look at the top, reflections on ray tracing. RTX on, notice everything is reflected as you would expect. The Rubik's Cube reflecting on the ground, in the mirror, in the sphere. One of the most anticipated titles, and I can't wait to see it. It's a title called Anthem, and um, the folks at Bioware uh, played, made a trailer for you guys. That's amazing, guys. The developers at Bioware just did, did such an amazing job at Anthem, and I'm looking forward to see, do our best to make it better. I almost reach out and touch it. Yeah, this shows a great example of the, uh, the combination of ray tracing and our physical based rendering and the work that we've been doing with NVIDIA. It really comes together here. Hey, Jonas, look at, look at the reflection of the windows in the buildings, on the buildings. Yep, exactly. It's, yeah, it's just working. Tracing. It's super nice. But of course, it's not a beautiful Dutch city without its own beautiful canals. So we can also walk over here. And of course, this is not just any normal canal. It's a ray trace canal. And we see the boats and the barges nicely reflected down there, as you would expect. But I would like to deep, uh, or dive deeper into ray tracing. We get some more ray tracing. If you shoot your fire cannon uh, across the scene here, then with ray tracing on, when looking down into the puddles, even when the flame effects is off screen, we still get the reflective view of the fire as we would expect. But with ray tracing off, when we turn that off, even though the fire is shooting, you can hear it in the background, we don't see it reflected anymore. So then if we turn RTX back on again and we move forward up to the tram cart, then inside the window of the tram cart right here, Oh, look at that. And again, you can see flame flying through the scene, moving dynamically. And not only do we reflect the dynamic moving particle effect, we also get a much more accurate representation of the surrounding environment. A brand new GPU. This brand new GPU, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the RTX 2060. The long-awaited RTX 2060, it is here. So the RTX 2060, RTX 2060, 52 teraflops of tensor core processing, five giga rays per second, six gigabyte frame buffer, G6, the fastest memories in the world. Okay, that's what it took to play what you just saw, Battlefield V, with ray tracing on. Now let's take a look at the performance. What you're looking at, if RTX was off, 
the frame rate would be about 60 frames per second. Now, when you turn on ray tracing, this is what happens. Hmm, we've been thinking about this for quite some time. And we know that ray tracing is computationally intensive. And it's going to continue to be computationally intensive. And that's the reason why we added the right proportioning between ray tracing cores, RT cores, and tensor cores, so that we could apply DLSS to this. And as a result, the new Turing GPU has a brand new shader architecture, as I mentioned. We double the amount of operations that we can simultaneously process. We can now inter, uh, process energy operations as well as floating point operations at the same time. We also doubled our cache, and we have the because we unified our shared memory and L1 cache, we have the ability to double that as well. So we would expect the performance boost relative to previous generations to be quite substantial. And as you can see, and with all of the other shader technology that you've seen uh, published about Turing, uh, for example, variable, variable ray shading, multi-view rendering, mesh shaders, and just the hundreds of new improvements that we put into our shader technology, shader architecture, you could see that the performance on any games is dramatically higher. But what's really interesting is this, and we would expect this. As games become more and more complex, as, as their shaders become more and more complex, we would see a trend line of Turing over Pascal to continue to advance. Well, turns out gamers need more performance than ever. If you plotted out all of the games that we have in GFE, these are all the games that our GeForce gamers are playing over the last several years. In order to sustain 60 frames per second at 1080p, you would have to triple the amount of computational capability over the course of the last four to five years. Meanwhile, resolution has increased from 1080p 60 hertz to 1440p 144 hertz, which is the reason why if you take a look at the number of X80, X60 class, 60 class gamers continue to grow over the last several years. In fact, it almost tripled over the last several generations in the last four years. And so if you take a look at, if you take a look at the 2060 now, compared to the install base of GeForce, this is kind of what it looks like. I mean, this is pretty extraordinary. A RTX 2060 is higher performance than a 1070, 1070 Ti. A 2060 is higher performance than a 1070 Ti. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to tell you that the 2060 is available for $349. $349. We have a special bundle. We're going to bundle with 2060 and 2070. You get either Anthem or Battlefield 5, so you can enjoy... DLSS or DLSS and ray tracing on Battlefield 5. And with 2080 and TI, you get Anthem and Battlefield 5. Incredible value. They'll be available on January 15th, next week. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2060 family. So we, we went out and we tested all of these, and this is what we kind of learned. We tested now about 400 of them, 400 monitors. Of the 400, 12 of them passed. 400 async monitors, 400 async monitors, 12 of them passed. But what we're doing is this. We're announcing today that we're going to test every async monitor the whatever is coming January 15th. You know, gamer things. They play games. They play... They play first-person shooters, MMORPG, and so we know that gamers don't just play games. They do other things. It turns out that because we have such a large install base, we know some of the things that they do. They, for example, they do animation. They love animation. There's about a million and a half animators in the world. There are video enthusiasts. They make beautiful, wonderful movies. They tell stories with movies. One of the most amazing phenomenons around the world is game broadcasting. 
broadcasting like you're a broadcaster while you're playing a game and uh, talking about what's happening, teaching other people what to do, commenting about what's happening around, around the, uh, in that game, and broadcasting it to all of your followers. PewDiePie, uh, is, is that right? Uh, 75 million followers. Three and a half billion dollars is generated by these broadcasters as their followers follow them. There are about eight million game broadcasters. And they broadcast on Twitch and they broadcast on YouTube. And 80% of them use the software package called OBS, created by this young man named Hugh. Hugh has never been seen. And um, we work very closely with Hugh. He's, he's, uh, he manages a community of, of developers. Um, and uh, OBS today is the industry standard, the world standard uh, reference for uh, video game broadcasting, which has to capture the game and code the game and stream the game. And then lastly, VR. Four million HMD VR displays have been sold for PCs in the last several years. There are now 3,800 games in Steam. It's being used for architectural design, the actors. When you're creating an animated movie, the application of VR. There's so many different applications of VR. And so these are all the different examples of how our game users uh, are using GPUs. And today we have some really exciting things that we're announcing. When we're developing Turing, we're thinking about all of these different use cases for our gamers. We want to build them the ideal PC for the gamer. Not just the ideal gaming PC, but the ideal PC for the gamer and all of the applications that they use it for. So today, I'm excited to announce several things. We're announcing that the RTX GPUs, every single one that we've shipped, will be able to accelerate Arnold, which is one of the leading renderers that will go into Max and uh, 3DS Max and Maya. And so for anybody who's doing 3D animation, modeling and animation, this is fantastic. If you could look at CG Society, the, all of the different arts that people are creating in, in 3D are just beautiful. We announced today that uh, we're partnering with RED, the cinematic video camera company, so that all of your RTXs that are desktop 2080 and above will be able to decode, interact, edit, color correct in 8K, and we'll be able to do it also in 6K uh, in future, some future products. But 8K video editing. We're announcing today that we partnered with OBS to create pro-quality broadcast streaming. Now, the reason why it's been so hard up to now is if you take a look at most of these systems, they have two PCs. OBS, most broadcasters with OBS have two PCs. One of them, which is playing the video game, and its output goes into a capture card, which goes into another PC, which is doing software encoding. And the reason why it's doing software encoding is because the quality needs to be super high. The reason why it's a separate PC is because they want that encoding to not affect their gameplay. And so they encode, they capture, they encode. With RTX, we've done several things. The first thing that we did was created a pro broadcast quality encoder. So our encoder can now achieve the level of quality that you could do with professional broadcasting. The second thing that we did was we created an SDK that allows us to capture, encode, and stream without affecting the CPU, all done on the GPU. So the load on the CPU is as small as possible. And the third thing that we did was working with OBS and Hue integrated our SDK and all of our technology into OBS. Uh, two years ago, we invented a technology called MaxQ. We announced it at Computex. And MaxQ is about extreme power management. And the problem we we're trying to solve is to create a laptop that allows a gamer to enjoy the highest possible gaming capability, but in a thin and light laptop. And so, we created this thing called MaxQ. We're announcing 40 notebooks for RTX. That's just an amazing number. Look at this. So when we announced MaxQ, uh, this is what it looked like. 
this is what a gaming notebook looks like. And there are many still that are made this way. And the reason for that isn't because of anything aside from the fact that, that the gamer wants to use it as a desktop replacement. They want to go, they want to take their desktop PC, essentially. They want to take their gaming PC to LAN parties and to their friend's house. And, and they want to game at its full potential. And I think that's fantastic. And we keep building these. However, there are many gamers who would like to have their gaming laptop be as thin as the type of laptops they see other people carry. So, and let me, let me now show you a couple of them. This one is from MSI. This is the GS65 Stealth. It's a beautiful laptop. 15% lighter, 10% smaller than last year's Max-Q. It has two and a half times the battery life, eight hours of battery life, 14 hertz, 144 hertz with this thin bezel. It's just really, really beautiful. Now, here's the performance of it. It's faster than a GTX 1080 desktop. This thin little laptop is faster than a 1080 desktop just recently. It is twice the performance of a PlayStation 4 Pro, the most powerful game console out there, and 30, just 30% of the volume. It's one-third the volume. It includes the keyboard and a battery. It runs 60 frames per second, Battlefield 5 with RTX on. It can do 6K red editing. The decode, the deburying, the color correction, 6K video editing in full frame rate, and it could do interactive 3D. Let me show it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a gigabyte 2080 notebook, 2080 RTX laptop. I want to show you a couple of fun things. Uh, this is uh, called Ansel. One of the things that's really, really cool is the number of people who are using our Ansel program to take game photographs. They use it with a free camera capability. So you could be inside and you can change your camera, pause the game, change your camera, take a picture. You could use it with our AI super resolution. So the way you play is one thing, then we can up res it like you can't believe and turn it into a poster. You could turn on super ray tracing mode. You apply all kinds of interesting filters to it. You could create virtual reality scenes. Um, images and photographs, 360 photographs, and you can export it into Photoshop. The number of people who are using this is just crazy. It's just so much fun. And the reason for that is because video game is not just gaming anymore. Video game is a form of art. With the help of all of our developer partners, this would have been possible. So